Be confident about it. You can do it. So do it. Let's get started. So we're gonna first take a look at what we have as a shadow wing in Japanese English education. Well, let's look at the definition first. A speech shadowing is a psycholinguistic experimental technique in which subject repeats speech in a delayed the onset of hearing your face. The time between hearing the speech and responding is how long it takes your brain to process and produce speech. Thanks, Wiki. And to see what it looks like in Japanese English education, I explore several Japanese websites that explain how to for shadowing. The majority of them look like this. It starts with a piece of audio and a finished script. On your hands which i consider as a room for improvement but moving on we're gonna touch on that later the generic recipe was you listen to a piece of audio with script you check a script and then listen to a piece of audio again with script and then you read a script out loud along with a piece of audio that is called overlapping and then you repeat what a speaker says as quickly and accurately as possible with script and you do the same thing without script you say that the purpose is to improve your speaking and listening skills okay sounds cool but as you guys know i didn't bring in this exact same approach i didn't fit the mold in a way i didn't fit the mold because i thought there were rooms to be improved if i want to achieve the goal of making english brain and i saw three rooms for improvement room for improvement number one there's no visual just letters and a piece of audio that i think is making the context unrealistic a little far away from the real life and it's also making it harder to link your emotions to the language because your emotions are not in the letter form when it first occurs but they're just what you feel, right? So I believe the material should be wilder if it's not taken in the wrong way Room number two, script is finished already Um, You want to have it finished, yeah, you want to have the right answer but in popular tutorials, you're supposed to check a script in such an early stage. It's almost like the same thing as you having a first interaction with the language in this letter form, which I think is a problem. If you want to make an English brain, you're going to be a visual and a sound. And room number three, mass shadowing as in mass production cannot perform at its 100%. This is something I came to realize after coming all this way, but yeah, it's nice to be in touch with a lot of native English. It's good. You should. However, you wanted to learn English equals you wanted to be able to understand the conversation. And if so, you're going to have to break it down. The sad news is that we're not actually a baby, though we should teach yourself like a baby. We're not an infant anymore. So in my opinion, just immersing yourself in the language will not make you speak it. Even if it does, it's not an efficient way, I would say. You immerse yourself in a pull of the language, but your eyes are still closed. You're gonna open your eyes and see what actually is going on. Wow, QOTD, quote of the day. All right, we're talking about my shadowing, finally. Thanks really for being patient with me. With my shadowing, of course, those three rooms to be improved got improved. Room number one was improved by using a material that is audibly and visually contextual. And in room number two, I kind of tried producing a script before looking at the answers, which are just the letters. In room number three, of course I did lots of episodes and series, but with the intention of trying to understand. I didn't care why this is this grammatically, but I did take time to deepen my understanding. So compared to how speech shadowing in Japanese English education targets your speaking and listening skills, mine has absolutely developed my sense of language, sense of English, and like intuition. And then mine let me expose myself to native English and know their range in vocabulary. Mine let me say a sentence in a way that a native speakers do and thus let me catch what they're saying. Because if you can say it, you can hear it. That's my logic and mine built up this processing pattern in which my brain stores English by auditory and eidetic memory. <laughs> and as a result, now I find it easier to remember some English by hearing it with some context there rather than by looking at it like this. Yep, and this should be such a great fit for most of Japanese people, I think, because you, most of you, you do know English so well you know how to make a sentence you know how the grammar works you know how to read out of it and you know how they're pronounced and you've got so much potential girl i mean guys be confident about it you can do it so do it <laughs> so 
My shadowing recipe is... You first prepare something to watch that has subtitles and the one that you can switch it on and off. But I do not really recommend things like TED Talks, like formal speech. But if it's something you really do enjoy, like I do with some songs by Michael Jackson, I will not stop you from doing that because that's what you can continue with, right? So, but the idea would be multiple people talking. So TV shows or series such as Friends, How I Met Your Mother, Modern Family. Yeah, you can just Google American sitcom and choose the one you like. Or if you want a British accent, you can be a British sitcom. And if you try these and you feel overwhelmed by multiple people talking, you can start with just one person talking, so vlogs. But I will post a video, another video of me just doing that whole process that I'm gonna explain. And in that video, I'm gonna share some of the good vloggers that will see your English level. Like I'm gonna divide them into intermediate, academic. So please stay tuned again. Once you get the material, first of all, watch a scene without script but with the intention of trying to understand or catch what they're saying. The length of the scene doesn't have to be like one minute on the dot. You can be flexible with that, but make sure that it is in the same scene set and that it suits your English level. Like it's not ideal to jump up between lots of scenes or to have a topic get cut off of way through. And repeat this for several times because that will let your brain store those expressions and phrases as an auditory memory with context and visual. And then after that, write out or say out loud what you think was said. And then turn on the subtitles and see what you called right and what not. And rewrite or write the correct line. You do this through a scene but sentence by sentence. And by this, you don't just end up being like, oh, okay, this what is next. But instead, you get to actively recognize Recognize what's missing and that gap you have with native English. Deeper your understanding. Work redactions, linking, accents, draw flow, draw walls of a word that was different from what you thought. Write English version of hurigana for the part that again was different from your perception. And by English version of hurigana, I mean things like this. Pick up new expressions or phrases that have some familiar words so you kind of get the meaning but you wouldn't really come up with. Pick up those and image search. Look up the synonymous and the meanings in English and you don't have to draw image for the meanings for every word but you can just do it for the words that you think is needed. So you bring yourself up to the point where you understand what they're talking about, what's going on in the scene from at least 55% to 80% or higher than that. And if it's below 55%, maybe you need easier material and a bit more basic knowledge. And then finally, imitate the speaking and shadow it. But please do not try to remember, no, memorize Anki, those expressions you learn. But do play and shadow the same scene on the next day, next, next day, and next, 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 next day. And you'll start having those expressions in you then try actually using it and now it's yours like i said play and shadow play it and shadow don't just shadow it i mean ideally speaking i want you to watch it but you can play as well because while playing you can multitask so so for example you start to see one of the episode one today and then you do the whole process i just explained and then what you're gonna do tomorrow is to play and shadow scene one and then do the whole process again for the scene two so you're moving forward, but your input and output are synchronized and they're slowly getting piled up. So that was my shadowing tutorial. I believe and hope it was helpful. When doing this, it's the key to say goodbye to all those grammatical shit. It is what it is. Take it that way. But I also understand that you come across a situation where you're like, oh, I really want to know why. I don't get it. I'm getting frustrated. I want to know why. Then go for a native speaker. Ask that person, that's no problem. And if that person says, well, it's just what it is, it's just what it is. <laughs> but the only downfall of developing English brain, language sense, and your intuition is that there are a lot of words that I don't know how to spell. I only know its sound and when to use it. It's not that of a big deal in this modern world though. And if you have time, you get that intuition and you can learn the spelling later if you need it. So I guess it's no problem and you can guess how to spell it if you know the sound. 
Uh, that was my shadowing tutorial. As always, I'm sending you love and hugs and kisses. You are worthy. You're great. You're awesome. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Bye for now. Love you. Bye.